Oh, never mind. You opened a ribbon. How did I, you, you, you how, did how, how did I screw up? How did I screw up? <laughs> All right. I was going to say you didn't open power. <laughs> Welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft. This is a team draft and it's going to be on Friday. So Luis has joined us again. Thank you for providing me with some of your luck with our open today. I, I Yeah, I'm having trouble deciding what the first pick is because I can't recognize that zero mana artifact. I haven't opened anything like that in so long. But uh, I, it looks pretty powerful. I think you should probably take it. <laughs> We, I think we opened a mox last week too, but uh, but yeah, uh, you complaining about not having power is rich. We've, I think, we've seen you with plenty of black lotuses in your decks. Well, fewer than I deserve. But uh, one thing to note out of this pack is you're you're, you're going to hook uh, Team Jabro a little bit, maybe, because you're, you're going to take Ruby, and then Dan is going to take Reanimate, and then Jabro is going to take Animate Dead under a lot of circumstances, because those are just clearly you have to take Ruby. That's not a question. But Animate Dead and Reanimate are a full, like, what, two tiers higher than the rest of the cards in the pack. Right. So just keep in mind that you probably are setting up your teammate a little bit here, though knowing J Bro, he probably first Think picked. Athari. <laughs> yeah, he, he, took, he took Noble Hierarch into Wolvenwald Oddity or something. Well, that's oh, good for. Yeah. There's an Entomb. Oh, my gosh. I mean, is it wild to just consider going into Reanimator? Not at all. I mean, if you pass Entomb here, then you'll have passed Dan an Entomb plus a Reanimate and picks two and three. That's pretty rough. Whereas if you take the Entomb, the best Reanimate card you ship is a Shallow Grave, which he's not going to want to take third pick very much. Right. Or you pass like Solitude, but Solitude doesn't really go all that well with Reanimate. It's fine. You could draft Black White, but there's a bigger chance that Solitude gets to J-Bro. There's also like a Retrofitter and a Dak Faden and a Preacher. So... I actually think Entomb has to be the pick here in a team draft setting. Right, but you would you would say that in a vacuum, Solitude is the more powerful card, but because of the team draft nature of this, Entomb is what you would take here. Yes, and if this was like an eight-player draft, you'll know you just shipped Animate Dead and Reanimate, so you're not really that thrilled about taking it in Entomb, but of course, the team draft dynamics is what changes things. Yes, otherwise you would just take Solitude. I do think you're supposed to take Entomb here. All right, let's do it. Moving on to pack number three, no, nothing for a reanimator deck necessarily. I do see a Kozilek, which sometimes goes into these types of strategies if you want something to sneak or breach in or shallow grave perhaps. Or there's lands? Yeah, watery grave can't be that bad. It's, it's just a good land in general. I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider you locked into reanimator. For example, if this pack had a really strong card that wasn't you know a reanimator card at all, like if there was a seasoned dungeoneer or... If there was like a set pest infestation or something like that, I would probably just want to take it. But given that there's nothing that's really pulling you that direction, Watery Grave seems like the the safest pick here. And you don't really fear passing Kozilek. Maybe Dan took Shallow Grave. I don't even think he probably did. And Kozilek does not work with Animate Dead or Reanimate. Yep. All right. Well, Watery Grave mocks Ruby in Tomb. Let's see how the rest of this draft goes. Uh, another fairly weak pack, nothing to reanimate. Some mid-range cards in Bob, Iconoclast, Thief of Sanity, and then some lands. Well, this is another pack where, you know, the best card in the pack is Questing Beast with Third Path Iconoclast being close behind it. I think those two cards are both pretty strong. Neither of them look that great for you. I think it would be reasonable to take, like, a Thief of Sanity. You could take, like, an Odawara or Maze of Ith or Gemstone Caverns as just, like, a, a, a safe pick that's going to keep you open. You're always, almost always going to get to put in your deck. But I don't know. It kind of depends what you're feeling. I wouldn't take the questing beast here. I don't really think you're well set up for that. Yeah. But you I, could take Bob, but Bob doesn't really go that well in Reanimator because the casting right. costs. So I, 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 I mean, Thief might be better. Yeah. I mean, Thief and Iconoclast are both good with Mox, of course. Totally. But I do like the idea of maybe just, given that we have the Watery Grave and we might still be interested in Black to taking the Thief over the blue-red card? Yeah, and I, I've liked how the Entomb pick has worked out in the sense that I just don't think it's reasonable to pass both because then if you see like an Atroxa, you just have to take it, that sort of thing. Right. Here, But right now, it doesn't look like you're veering that close to Reanimator. I mean, <laughs> there's another questing beast. There's Olvenwald Oddity. There's also an Evolved Sleeper. There's an Angrass Rampage. You could just take Bayou just because it's a black duel and you don't really know where you're going. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. this is another really weak pack and I think I'm happy just taking Bayou and seeing where it goes, noting that green does seem to be somewhat open from the right side. And if we continue getting, like let's say we get a late mana creature, we can maybe pivot into green. Yeah, I mean, Sultai uh, Thief of Sanity is also great. Turn one birds, turn two thief is just a good opening. 
All right, let's go with the Bayou here. We got some mana fixing, got an Entomb that we can't use just yet, and just the Thief of Sanity. Yeah, I would I would consider the Entomb uh, a hate draft at this point. Sure. Obviously, if it works out, it works out. Keep it in mind, but it's not something I'm I'm too I'm too attached oh, to. What are these packs, Luis? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, the packs look like they're kind of bad for everyone. Like, who knows? Maybe maybe uh, Billy, who's passing to you, is taking just great cards out of every pack. But, like, you know you're not passing Dan anything that good. He's probably yeah. on tilt, too. Would you take Dark Slick Shores or the Siphoner out of this pack? I would just take Dark Slick Shores. I think, yeah. like, I think taking a bunch of lands is fine because you can always find playable cards in cube. Often the limit is, like, can you put this in your deck? Can you cast it? If you have enough lands, like, you can cobble something together because now – you're getting to the point after picking, you know, three lands in a row here, basically. Maybe you could play, uh, you know, him to Turok in this deck while also playing Birds of Paradise or also splashing Pest Infestation. Or if you get, like, if a da- if that Dak Faden comes back around, not that it will, the pack wasn't good enough, you could justify splashing that too. You could just play, I don't know, four or five color mess. Like, you've, you've seen me play that deck a bunch of times. I feel like we've also done that a lot in our, in our duo drafts, just five color piles i mean they've worked out so well i mean we drafted reanimator last time right and we drafted like loris all, all, all removal the time before just like yeah. a four color removal um yeah i i guess here i guess you'd probably just concealing curtains like there's no reason not to take a black card and that's just the most generically good card like show and tell kitten and high tide are all combo cards that you have no support for i don't think you're in a position to take samwise tough cookies and artifact combo card and Robber the Rich and Virtual Lloyd's here are both good, but I don't really see why you would take a non-black card over a black card that are about the same. They're all just fine cards. Is there – Is I mean, we have no cards, so I'm happy taking the curtains, but just noting that we are passing show and tell to perhaps potentially a reanimator player, is that something that you think about? Yeah. I mean, you just kind of, kind of consider maybe don't let him get a late Portal of Frexia or something. Sure. But sh- show and tell is kind of hard to use anyway. <laughs> is this a sacred foundry? Is this a Leovold maybe actually? I, I kind of like Leovold here. You have the start to be able to cast it. Leovold, when you can cast it, is just such a beating of a card. Yeah. Also, green hasn't been particularly open here, but if pack two, you get... Well, no, that's not true. You passed Questing Beast, Olvenwald Oddity. Maybe maybe you you could end up picking a couple mana dorks up and then just playing four color mana dorks or three color mana dorks. And that, that I think, is is a legit archetype as well. Yep. Is this a Gigantha deck? Can we compare? I was just just looking at it. (laughs) We meet the criteria for now. Yeah, you do. Um, or do we want to just dig? I kind of am just thinking dig through time because yeah. these decks end up with as many fetch lands as you can get and cheap interaction. So plus Entomb Dig is kind of a combo. Entomb is like a like a lotus petal for dig. Wow. Wow. Entomb. <laughs> just that's just any one mana spell. Oh no, no, no. no, it's, no, no, uh, no. It, it puts, puts two, two cards in the yard. In the yard. <laughs> oh man. Come on, Paul. Keep, keep up with it. Can't wait to can't wait till we pick up a thought scour. <laughs> it's that's a dark ritual. Money. Well, <laughs> This yeah this this pack uh, this pack one looks looks pretty bad. Okay, so shallow grave wield. You Probably could take, take it? you could take the shallow grave. You have an entomb. Yep. Like there's no there's no no reason that you can't do that. Yeah, there's nothing really in this pack for us other than a speculative stomping ground. So yeah, I w- I think the pick would be stomping ground otherwise. But who knows? Maybe that Kozilek will come back. Maybe there's no consideration for pack, so. like specking on crop rotation in case we get no, some strip mine stuff think, going. No. You already have sh- the the entomb. So all right. The Shallow Grave spec seems a little stronger. All right, got it. There's a Kozilek. Okay. I mean, that that is that could is a happen. good combo. Yeah. Could happen. Also, there's two two green cards in that pack. Oh, this is interesting. I, I guess I've never it's played probably, this yet. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a fine card. It's probably Gemstone Caverns. I do like Maze of Ith in some decks. Sure. It's also a good sideboard card. If you're if you're fighting over the initiative, like imagine if you're playing with J Bro's Red Green Beats deck, isn't Maze of Ith awesome? Yeah. I also kind of want to get lucky. <laughs> yeah. Do you? Oh, okay. Uh, the oddity table, the questing beast did not. But I don't. Do we just take the oddity because it's the most? Or do you think we take the rampage? I would take oddity. I think. Yeah. I think that there's a non-zero chance that you end up. Oh, black cliff cliffs is nice, nice and free. We have two red sources. Yeah. Just keep in mind, you know, you got two red sources. You got a green source. You got like one splashable green card. You got an oddity. You got the little shallow grave package. Yeah, you, you got a lot of things going, Paul. The future's uh, uh, looking bright with this uh, deck. <laughs> bright? I'm a little bit concerned. Oh, look. N- and now you got there. You got a fable oh, of the mirror. Are we splashing this fable? I, I don't know what splashing means. You don't really have well, any Sure. Colors. That's okay. That's fair. When I'm looking at this pack. I see a sneak attack, right? Which yeah, could... You just can't. You just can't take sneak over fable, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. 
But I mean, I'm just looking at this as something that we could maybe hope F- to Fable's table. is a lot better than Sneak Paul. So yes, I take. Th- thank you. I realize <laughs> that Fable is the best red card. Okay. Um, cards to note here that we're passing from the direction that was being passed to us is Swords of Plowshares, Time Spiral. I think Billy the Kid is probably playing white. You saw no white cards. Just you saw solitude. one solitude. Right. And then that was it. So it could have opened a piece, of, a piece power of power there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, passing a swords is unfortunate, but there's no way you can there's no way around it. Yeah. Oh, and there's Archon. Okay. I mean, it looks like you successfully cut Dan off of Reanimate by not passing a single Reanimate card, which I think is actually great cuz you made you made him waste his second pick. I would assume. It would be shocking if he did not take Animate Dead or, ne- or Reanimate out of him. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and we got a fable. That's another discard outlet. But I think we just yeah. take the we just take the archon here and just uh, see what happens. I mean, the two reanimate spells. Obviously, they're super powerful. They're not going to table. But getting this past is a great sign, right? Because if yeah. he's if he's reanimated, he's just slamming this, right? Unless he opens yeah. power. Yeah. Yep. And and I think that we'll see how this pack goes. But there's a chance. Yeah. Like, look. Now there's an exhum. There's also yeah. This is actually a fr- fairly strong pack. There's a breach. There's a grim monolith. Hex drinker is kind of nice, but. I think you just take Exhum because you have Archon, so you have Entomb, Exhum, Archon is just like, you know, an I win combo. All right. This is uh, looking more promising. We now have more direction. Yeah, and... this dig doesn't look that good anymore. Uh, yeah. Who knows about what you're splashing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, now there's a Vamp? Vamp is just so good when you have Entomb in your deck. All right. Vamp, Entomb, two reanimation spells, and as you mentioned in uh, the previous week, the premier reanimation target there in yeah. the Archon. All right. Yeah, and maybe you play, end up playing some of these green cards, maybe not, but like the, the way the packs were, you weren't taking anything great over them. Right. Yeah, you're going to put Fable in your deck. At this point, I would be really surprised if you didn't put Thief of Sanity in your deck just because you have two blue-black duels already. Yeah. Um, Leovold, I'm less sure about. That's going to depend on on what what the, the rest of your mana looks like. Right. You're not... I don't think you're playing Dig. Yeah. You just – it's okay with, with Fable, but I think like in terms of filling your graveyard. But I think if you could just be base black with only single pip card from other colors, like that would be a decent way to, to kind of make up for not having like tons and tons of fixing because it doesn't look like anyone's passing a lot of fetch lands. You saw an Arid Mesa, but you would have had to take it over Archon of Cruelty. So yeah, yeah. That was not, not going to happen. We have a bunch of duels, but – we don't have the actual fetches to turn our, some of our lands the, into The cool thing, too, lands. is by passing Reanimate and Animate Dead, you also might have signaled to Dan that you are not playing Reanimator. So it's right. possible that, that you end up... Oh, look, and now there's a Persist, which gets back Archon. I mean, I think that's the pick. You could you could consider taking Oliphant. Oliphant is also really good. Yeah, and you can, you can animate it. We don't have any duels just yet for it. And both the reanimation spells in that pack one did not table. I'm well, just they, wondering. They would, ne- they would never table. No, no, of so. course, of course, of course, of course. I'm just wondering if that means we'll also have less opportunities at reanimation spells. Yeah, I, I would probably take the persist, I think. Okay, yeah. It is it is close, it is close. But Archon, Archon justifies it. Because you're basically, at this point, trying to maximize the number of hands that have either Entomb or Vamp plus either one of the three reanimate spells. Yeah. Because th- those are just like free win games. All right. What do we have? We have Reggie. Do, what are your thoughts on Reggie as something to play in your reanimate? I, I like Reginald. Like you you play Reginald and if you can discard a reanimate target, it works nicely. It's zero mana, so it actually works with Shallow Grave Eldrazi. You, you just get it on your upkeep. Yeah. And it's also a 7-6. Like your opponent does have to do something about it. It's just going to attack them three times. All right. I mean, I think it's really the only option out of yeah, this pack. Yeah, there's so. nothing else here that's all that yeah. great anyway. All right, Reginald getting in. And now we have a pack of Trumpeting Carnosaur, Flame Slash, and Recurring Nightmare as options. Huh. I don't think it's the Flame Slash because I think that the Carnosaur still is removal while also working with the reanimate plan. Like just discarding we, it and then persisting it is pretty nice. I think the Carnosaur seems safer. We don't have that many yeah. creatures. And Recurring Nightmare can be really good. But you do need to have... I, I'm not to the point where I want to cut Recurring Nightmare, but I have noticed it's just been the weakest reanimate spell for a while because right. it requires all the normal reanimate stuff plus having a creature in play. That said, it, it can be really fun in like the green decks that can loop it multiple times a turn. What, one thing is, uh, man, blue it just does not seem open. We just have no, seen in, in, in very, any very way, shape, or form. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Ooh, I didn't know Eidolon was in here. Uh, yeah, I tried to I tried to make it mono red a little bit bit better or red aggro a little bit better because white aggro had gotten so much better. Probe seems like a fine card yeah, for this pack. I like probe. Okay. Probe is good to, at knowing whether the coast is clear to reanimate. It's also yeah. a nice little mini combo with uh, Vampiric Tutor because if you ever have both those, it's like build your own Demonic Tutor. <laughs> yep, yep. You have to pay a lot of life, but hey, sometimes that's oh, what you wow. need to that's do. That's a late brainstorm. That is. And if our mana works, we can still probably consider playing that, right? There's nothing else in this pack for us. Yeah, I don't think you care about missing out on any of the other stuff. Okay. Unless you think you might Doomsday. <laughs> uh, we seem kind of far away from that. So, yeah, the only thing leading you towards Doomsday is the fact that you have the the triple black, you know, it doesn't look like it's going to be that challenging because you're just going to be playing tons of black sources. Right. So if you like picked up Athos as Oracle, you could consider it, but I, I don't think I would have. Are we dragoning here? I do like the dragon. It's that or Bloodthirsty Adversary. I, I don't think you <laughs> want Bloodthirsty Adversary, get the Exhum back or the Persist. It, yeah, it can be okay, but I would take the dragon. This, yeah. The dragon is a good red black like fair reanimator card where like you've got definitely you're you're on the combo side of reanimating, but ooh, Blood Fountain actually seems like it could be legit here. Yeah, I mean it's just another just another it's a way discard to put outlet that also picks up uh, your creatures if at some point, and then you're passing two good green one drop excels, so it doesn't really make sense to hate either of those. Yeah. So you're passing a Teferi, but whatever. Uh, I think, or or maybe a Ranger Captain. I don't know, but. I think taking the Blood Fountain there works out. So what this pack we, was really good for you. You picked up Archon, Exhum, Persist, like that's that's a and, and Vampiric Tutor. That's a pretty nice set of cards. And Fable too. We did, we did. Uh, I suppose we just take the spell bomb here. Yeah, I think over so. Scion of Draco and Mutagenic Growth. Would like another solid reanimation Ooh, target. Happy with your braid. Braid is nice. Yeah, that's a nice pickup. Now. Yeah, it's Atraxa, dare I say. Maybe. Atraxa would be sick. You don't <laughs> want to first pick it, though. You want to open a piece of power and then, like, like third pick the Atraxa. See, Shh. you got to think strategically here, Paul. <laughs> Fine, Luis. Let's open a Black Lotus, I guess. No, don't get greedy. Paul, you can't get greedy either. You got to open, What do like, you mean? L it like was so good in our deck. Like a Mox Jet or something. No, no, no. You're, the Lotus is too greedy. You got to... Mox Jet. Okay. You, you got you to gotta settle for a Mox Jet and then get past an Atraxa. All right, fine. That's okay. I'll take Mana Crypt. <laughs> Just give me the Mana Crypt. Although well, I, Mana Crypt, Mox Jet would be better for you than Mana Crypt. I yeah, think. that's true. I'm just thinking turn one Fable. I wouldn't complain about either of them, but... I wouldn't either. So I'd ring. complain a little bit about Mox Pearl. It'd be pretty unlucky to open the one Mox... That we would still it. play in our deck? <laughs> well, you, you would still play it, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Um, this deck does not have too many ways to generate card advantage oh okay question on boromir where is this card supposed to be really good mm, it's not supposed to be really good anywhere it's just it's 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 a fine card i don't know okay I, it might not be good enough i certainly trying it where yeah. is where is it are we taking life death out of this pack is it mana vault this is just not a good mana vault deck is the problem right we don't we don't have anything up here oh the sneak it hard cast Ar it hard cast archon yes i didn't expect sneak to wheel I, I would just take Life Death, I think. And, like, Lutri is also really good. You could just take Lutri. It, so this is a card that will always companion. You can always companion it. Yeah, it's a free card. You have Exhum, Persist, Shallow Grave. Yeah, I might actually just take Lutri. It's good with Probe. It's good with Brainstorm. If you, get it, you, you should probably pick up a removal spell in this pack. It's also good with a Braid. And maybe hope to wield the uh, Goryeo's Vengeance here, probably? Yeah, Goryeo's or Vengeance looting. seems like a pretty... Or, or, or Looting or Survive Triumph. Okay, I'll take the Lutri. I actually have not been, been uh, I have not played with this one as a companion yet, so let's yeah, see how this one goes. Yeah, it's definitely good. I'm going to put it here. <laughs> uh, what do we have here? There's a Bitter Triumph, which is a great, great removal spell that also puts something into your yard, and a From the Catacombs. What are your thoughts on From the Catacombs? It's a very good card. I, I would lean here towards Bitter Triumph because it, it sets up everything you're trying to set up and is just really efficient. Shame to pass wheel too, but maybe you get yeah. scrapwork mutt back. Yeah, this is no, a pretty good pack. Great. There's like yeah, catacombs, Jace wheel, Sarah Paragon always gets taken. So yeah, we'll see. I'm really just hoping for one. Go oh, there it is. Was this third pick? <laughs> Boom, this was third, third pick. Third. Just just like I said. <laughs> just like I said. All right. Also, bitter triumph. By the way, good with Lutri. Yeah, picking up an Atroxa is fantastic. Oh for you my here. gosh, and this is a good pack. Now, 
Now I'm feeling pretty good, and it makes that Gorio's Vengeance that might wheel even better. Right, right. The Shallow Grave works on any creature, right? Mm-hmm. The okay. top creature in your graveyard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could Lutri Shallow Grave. Boom. Put the whole squad <laughs> sure. in. All right. That was we sick. have that was the sick. premier reanimation targets. We have, what, three reanimation spells with a Vampiric Tutor on top of that. So this is looking much, much better here. And now we have a pack with Blood Tithe Harvester, Collective Brutality, and Knight's Whisper as, I believe, the top options. What do you like out of those? It's tough because I like all of them. I, I would lean towards Blood Tithe just because I like that it interacts on the board. Like, so does Brutality, but Blood Tithe, you have like a Blood Fountain to get it back. It gives you the Blood Token to discard still. Also, the Blood Token, you can play this on turn two, and the Blood Token hangs out till you're ready to use it, whereas like Brutality is a little harder to set up. So right. it is okay. close, but and, and I think that there is something to Blood Tithe is a little more likely to wheel, but I would still just take the card you want more here. All right. Let's take the Harvester. And now we're looking at a pack with Unholy Heat and City of Traders and Talisman of Indulgence are the ones that kind of stand out to me. I would imagine it's Unholy Heat here. You've got like a bunch of different types to go in your graveyard. You have some like random artifacts. Like with Lutri, yeah, you're not going to play this Brainstorm and probably not this Thief either. Yeah. I think if you can go straight Red Black, you'll be happy. Right. Um, Lutri, oh, the, you, you do want to play the blue black lands for Lutri, but uh, Lutri having cheap spells to copy is it, it does go a long way towards making the card a lot better. You don't want it to just be a three two flash idiot. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Let me just read this just to make sure I know it. It just forks something, right? Like anything. Okay, Any cool. internal sorcery you control. Wow, oh. I saw Bloodstained Mire, but then there's a Shieldred. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just took Shieldred. Oh, also, like wow, you're not gonna have the best mana in the world, but. When you're just a two color deck and you have one dual land, like that's fine. You don't need to, you don't need to go out of your, super far out of your way to pick up the fetches. Like the the fetches and duels weren't really flowing this draft, so that kind of deck wasn't really open. Right. Like yeah, I don't even. You might want to play Bayou because there's weird situations with treasures that let you play Atroxa. Yeah, yeah, I think that one is free enough, but I probably don't want. Oh no, I, but you said I do. Would you play the Dark Slick Shores to cast the Lutri? Probably. I know the Watery Grave is free -ish. You always draw Lutri. It's in your hand every game. Yep, that's true. That's true. So. All right. Fatal Push. It's yeah, a good efficient removal. Great. Yeah. I would take that over Fiery Eyelid or Bray's Apprentice. Bray's Apprentice is not bad. Okay. But yeah, with the Lutri just having... Now we have a lot of good targets for the Lutri. So this, this Lutri seeming a lot better. Especially... Goes really well with these cheap spells. We have a braid, fatal push, and unholy heat now to copy. Yeah, oh, and that's a triumph. lot of good cheap spell. And question: When you're casting the bitter triumph, you don't have to do the meet the condition again, right? You can just no, you don't. Okay. Is this a crypt? Fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, I would 22? imagine so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is just like Shield Edict is nice, but you already have a bunch. And I would take Blood Crypt over Restless Vents. I think that just the untappedness is is too is too important. Yeah. All right, so it's probably not playing the Thief, and now we're looking at a deck with twenty two cards. And I think th there was a real good chance that we were going to take. Ooh, look at this! All, both the animation spells and, and the looting. looting. I mean, you you got to take Life Death, right? Like. The fact that Gorya's Vengeance doesn't work on Archon or, or, or Carnosaur is just too big of a beat. Yeah. And what are the ways that we have to discard? We have enough, right? Oh, we you're have... doing great. Because you have Blood yeah. Fountain, you have Blood Harvest. Harvester, you have Bitter Triumph, you have Regisaur, you have Fable. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're doing awesome. Would you play this Kozilek here, though? I think so. Okay. Oh, Scrapwork Mutt? I, I like Sinkhole, but especially Lutri Sinkhole? Wait, hold on, hold on. No, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Do we want to kill two lands or make our deck function? Kind of well, like, uh, well, kind of like making a bit your of a deck false function. choice. I want both. Inquisition wield two. Okay. Paul, I would say that that I read the draft perfectly here with the entomb deck. In the collective I, brutality, I mean, we back. didn't think Reanimator was open, and then it just opened itself up. Or Ish. we opened it up by being trailblazers. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right. Well, now we have more than enough. Uh, more than enough yeah, cards. You could here. Deadly Dispute. Could you? I, I don't, don't think so. I Probably not. You, you just picked up a million enough. playables. Yeah. We I do like from... Deadly Dispute in decks with Mana Vault, though. <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, that's And that's... it's good with, like, Blood Fountain. Also also true. Do you like... I mean, probably don't even need to play this Virtue, right? But no. We'll it, it's, it's also... 
I guess you can I mean, copy you, with. Can you copy? You with can Lutri? copy it with Lutri. You 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 only get the one exiled card, of course. Okay. This could be one of those. Uh, what is? How much removal do we feel like we need based on the deck yeah, of our teammates? Right? Yeah, you 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 could see what what's going on with your teammates first. All right. This is what we have laid out in front of us. Uh, right now, we decided to put Kozilek in the sideboard. Uh, it only works with the Shallow Grave. And so that's the one of the cards that we cut, just because I think we have enough cards here. We cut Virtue Persistence because we have the Boros Aggro Player. And then we also cut the Pyrite Spellbomb. But we need, I think we might need to cut one more card here, Luis. I'm looking at 24 spells. What do you think? I agree with you, Paul. Good call. I need to figure out a way to mute that thing. All right. <laughs> I, I think that uh, I think you could actually play effectively sixteen land because you, you're not really counting Archon or Atrox as castables. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Atrox is only very barely castable in this deck, and De Decadent Dragon you can cast the you know the the draw two part of it, the, the expensive taste for three mana. So really, the only card in your deck that costs four mana or more is Shieldred, because you can also discard Carnosaur on three. So your curve really ends at three. You have one Shieldred and then two uncastable fatties. That feels to me like you could just play one fewer land. Um, it is close, okay. though, because Lutri gives you a mana sink and you have a bunch of looting effects. But also, like, what what, what do you want to cut out of this pack or out of this, out of this deck at this point? Okay. Do you, if you have enough discard outlets, maybe Blood Fountain's fine to cut. You have you would still have Entomb, Scrapwork Mutt, Blood Tithe Harvester, Brutality. Collective Brutality, Bitter Triumph, Fable, Register. Yeah, yeah, get the blood get the blood fountain out. Okay. All right. And um the gemstone caverns. This is is this this is a card you're always starting, right? I have not played with this card yet. I would not always start it, but if your mana is good enough to where a colorless land isn't a huge burden, which I think you're you, you qualify. You have two red black lands, and the rest of your lands are kind of for irrelevant, you know, purposes. Yeah. Um, when it comes to like getting mana screwed on red black, that is, and you also have a bunch of looting, so you could even loot it away when it's bad. I I think I would main deck it, okay? Because like it's worth playing the Bayou because the only thing, it, the only drawback to playing Bayou is wasteland, and that's just not a big drawback. And sometimes you'll have Bayou, Dark Slick Shores, a treasure, and you can cast a Trox off it. <laughs> it's thin, but it's not zero. And then the blue lands, you definitely have to play. Even the Dark Slick Shores and Watery Grave, which have like costs, yeah. because of Lutri. Because you always draw Lutri, and casting Lutri is just so good. Okay, so we're just kind of playing this assuming it's a colorless land. Yeah. And that's probably the best way to go about it. This gives us access to four, nine black, and nine red. Oh, that's perfect. Do you, do you, would, you, would you go 10-8 here? Um, we're definitely a lot heavier in black, and we yeah, do have a go ten eight. You don't have double. You don't even have double red cards. Like okay. Carnosaurs and Dragon are both have alternate costs. So I think our deck is set and looks pretty sweet. Yeah, it looks great. All right, starting things off with Edgar's deck. This is a Boros deck. Boros looks like it was pretty open. No Sandy Dog in the draft. What do you think about this deck, Luis? Well, he's got Plateau and two fetches, which is like the first thing I look at when you're trying to play both red and white cards on curve. So that's great. Wasteland is good. Comet, Othari, and Raghavan are all excellent, as is Palace Jailer. And he's got a good Mother of Runes, a good curve, plus Lightning Bolt, Burst Lightning, Fiery Confluence. This just looks like an excellent Boros deck. I think that Edgar's going to do, do great. What are your thoughts on Boneheart Dracosaur versus maybe something like, I don't know, a Glimmer Lens here in the sideboard? I, I, especially with City of Traders, I don't mind the Dracosaur here. He's got a good curve. Like, I like the way he's laid his curve out to where I don't think you need Glimmer Lens and Bone Horde is a really nice reward. If they don't kill it, you basically just win the game. Yeah, no, that's fair. So, solid Boros deck. Really happy about this one. Let's go to the next one. This is Luis Salvato's Telerian Academy Ancestral Recall Candelabra. This deck looks sweet, Luis. This, deck, this looks like something you would draft. Oh yeah, I mean it's got it's got dark depths and stage. It's got Urza's saga, uh, no power power besides ancestral, of course. But I mean like no moxes, but like mox opal is really good. Grim monolith, mindstone talisman, so a bunch of low drops, and then uh, Sai and Sahelia's art token generators and time spiral mystic confluence with coveted jewel. Yeah, the only thing this deck's missing is of course something like a mox or mana crypt would just you know make it go completely over the top. Or like a Mishra's Workshop would have been excellent here. But this is still a very, very good deck. And uh, I think Salvato kind of did it this time. Yeah, I was kind of hoping to see a Tinker somewhere in this pile. 
It's just because I saw all those uh, expensive artifacts, but doesn't have it, but still looks like an awesome deck. Then moving on, we have Jaybro <laughs> with a nice Demir mid-range deck, but somehow he ended up Demir and didn't doesn't have the Animate Dead or Animate reanimate which we passed in that direction right those were the two best cards in the pack <laughs> yeah and he doesn't remember seeing them so <laughs> I, don't what really know what, I don't really know what went on there but it worked out fine yeah dan certainly took one you cut dan he's probably playing it in some deck but it's not like an animate deck uh Debra also has time walk snapcaster jace uh Vrin's prodigy so well also mind sculptor which is excellent force of negation so this looks like a really good blue black deck i like what, what jay bros got i would have been good if he had you know seen animate dead or, or reanimate because he probably would have taken one for his deck okay round one folks playing against billy the Paul, did you start here. recording yet i did <sighs> Is you know i started recording i even told you <laughs> that i was pressing the start recording button and yet you still have this thing set up with the coffee but anyways <laughs> let's continue let's choose my companion goodness you get two companions for this draft? Well, I, sick. I don't know. Can I get rid of one of them? All right. So, <laughs> They're both equally useful? <laughs> this is a, a fairer hand. Yeah, this hand is not great, but I would, have, of course, keep it. Yeah. You have all the discard outlets. Oh. Uh, I don't love this. <laughs> um, you just are missing a reanimate spell and a creature. Oh, this is a lot better. If, if, if your opponent had played like a white two drop, I would have been, oh, well, that's great. <laughs> I would have been a lot more worried. But they played a green dork, which means that A, you could probably kill whatever they ramp out with your spells in hand, and B, you just drew on Holy Heat like a master. and Like a master. Well, n n look, a mox is very strong, obviously. But you've negated a lot of the power of the mox by just having cheap removal, killing the things they play. Would you duress and, them? Uh, yeah, I probably would. It's going to miss a decent amount of the time, but... What else are you going to do? You have two other discard outlets in hand. I think you should cast your spell. All right. Get a it's just hard not, not using mana, you know? Yeah. And, the, and this might clear a swords to plowshares or something out of the way. Because uh, this is who you were, who was passing to you. And you pass them a swords, right? Yeah. So if you have a registrar that you want to play next turn... Also, Ooh, oh, that's a good hit. <laughs> oh, that's a great hit. Okay. So Questing Beast is coming down next turn, but I mean, getting getting the fourth tier Lingus out of hand is awesome. You know, every time you say this card, something something with my headset's kind of weird. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. I just, I hear something differently, but we'll move on. <laughs> All Look. right, so this makes everything a forest. Yeah. And Questing Beast is down. Okay. And I assume we're just going to go ahead and triumph this, depending yeah. on what we draw. Oh, that was actually really good, because now you don't have to worry about using up all your discard outlets. Um, yep. Yeah, so what are your other options? You can play Regisaur, but then you get Skyclaved and hit for another four. You can I, put, can you can take, I can put Lutri in my hand. my hand. But the thing is, even if I did, I wouldn't be able to Lutri Bitter yeah. Triumph next turn anyways. Yeah, I think I like just casting better trauma. Probably just now. There's no real reason to wait, I don't think. All right. Would you take damage? Mm, probably, we, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because if you, if you discard a card, you're discarding a swamp, and then you're playing Registrar, and it might lead you into an awkward position. I think just taking right. three here is good. And so Billy's got now three cards in hand. One's a Skyclave. If one's a land, I mean... I don't know. Do they have another threat to play? I guess it looks like they do. Boromir. Uh, okay. Would you upkeep? Would you um, upkeep in tomb? Just get the Archon in there. Yeah, that seems fine. You don't really. I think Archon is the one you'd want anyway, right? Yeah. Though you can cast Archon a little easier than you can cast Atroxa. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean we're pretty maybe, far away, but you could also just draw. Like yeah, I don't know, like okay. just wait. Maybe you want to spend mana. <laughs> I would have entombed Darkon, I think, but Bruce! It, it's fine. You can discard the Archon. <sighs> I could. Well, they have the Skyclave apparition. Yeah. I mean, am I just putting Lutri in my hand this turn? Yeah, that's probably good. All right. Just deny the ability to cast a Skyclave this turn. Yeah. Oh man. And then get an Atrox end of turn. Yeah, I guess we're just entombing the Atraxa at this point. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. We don't have any flashback cards, right? There's no like faithless looting in our deck. 
No, that would be sick. That'd be cool, yeah. Lutri the Entomb. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And she was hoping that Billy at some point draws another land here and not another play. Yeah. Didn't play a land, though, that previous Last turn. turn. Yeah. yeah. So probably has but, something. I mean, the other thing is you, you might just be... You could wait on the Entomb, honestly, because next turn, if you don't draw anything, you might just go Lutri mid-combat and block Boromir, in which case you 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 could copy Entomb. Oh, just to put like what a, a land in my graveyard too, or what? Yeah, I guess you do. I guess you don't mind drawing Carnosaur at this point, and that's that's your last fatty. Yeah, maybe just cast Entomb now, and that way, if you draw a two mana spell next turn, you can Lutri it. Okay, land is good. Okay, great. All right, let's Entomb. And Atraxa seems to be the card. Yeah, can you draw a reanimation spell? Okay, well, that's two things we can play this turn, at least. Yeah, you could also just slam Regisaur plus Blood Tithe. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And then if you... Because you have the one-turn buffer of Archon to, that you don't care about discarding at all. Right. Like, it's even better to discard. And then Skyclave is probably killing the Regisaur anyway, and then in which case the... Blood Tithe trades for for Boromir. Okay, we're we, the next we're, draw, we're drawn to some some decent oh, cards here now, right? You're, you're drawing so much more live than your opponent. You probably have like five cards in your deck that if you draw them, you win the game. Right, and they might have some good plays too, but it's not. It's unlikely they have cards with as high an impact as yours. Of course, you paid the cost by putting in tombs and big creatures in your deck right. that you could also draw. You know. Yeah. Their average card is also probably a little more castable than yours. But you actually don't have many uncastables left. You've actually entombed yeah. them all. We just have the Archon and the Atraxa. All right. So three mana. Probably the Apparition on Reggie. I'm at 10. I think they want to keep getting in. Although trading Boromir for Blood Tithe Harvester probably doesn't feel great. But that does clear yeah. the way for the Apparition to start attacking. I mean, your other option is to take the hit off Boromir and then Blood Tithe the Skyclave and you get a 3-3 three, three out of that. So it's kind of like trading for both. But yeah. I feel like Lutri can already trade for Skyclave if you need to, so it's true. Just taking less damage off the Boromir is is good because it just you just want to extend the game because if you draw one of those reanimates, it's great. Also, if you draw Life Death, you want to be able to cast it still. That's 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 very fair. We would go down to three, so or two because you might get the Archon now. Yeah, Archon is looking a little better. Okay. Oh. Lauren, they're going to kill the blood token. Sure, that doesn't really matter. And then you discard Archon to yeah. thing. And then next turn, if you draw a castable, then you cast it. And if you don't, like, there's not many uncastables left. And right. you might not, you're not going to have to discard Lutri anyway, because even if you drew, like, Shieldred, you could then discard Archon, cast Shieldred, and on your next step, keep Lutri in response to the, the Regisaur. Yep. Okay. Ugh. That was probably the worst possible draw. <laughs> yeah, just send yeah. with the Regisaur, I think. Send with the register, then they'll use the... You could actually send with both. Oh, because I can ambush this? Yeah, because if you send with just Registor, is, is the, at this point, would then Billy go Skyclave your Blood Tithe? Yeah, I don't know. I, attacking, attacking with Reggie definitely makes sense. They would probably trade this, no? Yeah, I guess you don't really... But then... Yeah, that seems fine. Then in that case, just attack with the Registrar. That seems good. Yeah. And you, I guess you got to play the Gemstone Caverns. It's, right. it's, kind, it's, kind of, it's kind of unfortunate because uh, that reveals the last card in your hand. But right. I don't think you ever have much of a choice. Those blue lands letting you cast this Lutri, by the way. Good call. Yeah, they would just be swamps otherwise. Oh, I wonder if we were supposed to not play the Gemstone Caverns because of Loren? It's oh, kind of weird because they might activate Lauren now and then you'd have to discard that card to the Regisaur. Oh, you're yeah, no, that's a good point. That's a good point. But if you don't play the Gemstone Caverns, you just straight up discard it. I guess maybe the reason to discard it is you, there's no spell that it helps cast at this point because sure. Carnosaur is your only six mana spell and, and it, you, you need a second red anyway. The Gemstone Caverns doesn't help. I still think your position's all right, but you have been drawing kind of bricks. Oh, what is this? This is something different. Yep. No, that's okay. not great. Okay, now we got ourselves a problem. 
A dungeoneer, yeah. one of the best creatures in the cube. I mean, maybe a reason not to play gemstones also that you could just hold on to your Lutri and wait on it. Because I just don't need a land in my hand at all. Yeah, th- I don't think that land helps at all. Also, I think your opponent probably has another land in hand. Didn't play a land, then then ran into this situation where the sky cl- the the seasoned engineer got a land, and mm-hmm. I, I think got punished for not playing out all their lands. We'll see, but yeah, it makes sense given the way the game's gone. I guess you just have to cast Lutri now. Yeah, yeah, I should have just had gemstone in the graveyard and, and Lutri just still right. in hand. Because now, if we draw a good spell, we could have copied yeah. it. Yeah, though if you draw a good spell, you also might just win. That would have been sick to double shallow grave. Oh yeah, they are doing the play. Oh, shallow grave. Oh, fiddle push. Nice. That doesn't. Kill oh, anything. you can't cast it. Oh, <laughs> disaster. Oh, jeez. I this is sorcery speed, right? Yeah, yeah, it's sorcery. Okay. Well, they're at thirteen. Maybe we can just put some pressure on here. That's not bad. No, you you probably slow roll it, but uh, you can I'll hit attack with the for star, seven. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to eat what's, something. What's Boromir's creature type? Uh, I imagine human something. Human soldier. human soldier. That's not a warrior. Okay. Okay. All right. That's good. And what's Lauren's creature type? Human artificer. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So it's just the dungeoneer. So it's not clear what they do to this uh, Registor here. Okay. Reggie's still doing some work. Just chumping with Boromir is fine, actually. Because now yeah, you can conceal and curtains them. Yeah. So had we had the land in the hand after does fatal push count both? No, just yours, right? Yeah, it okay, wouldn't okay. have been on yeah, yeah, either yeah, way. Yeah. Okay. Though it would be on at some point and kill the seasoned engineer, maybe. But yeah. What about this? When this transforms, this doesn't like leave the battlefield or anything, right? No. Okay. All right. Taking this uh, skyclave apparition, most likely. I hope so, because if not, that means they have something better in their hand. <laughs> yeah. Come on, we have a bunch of reanimation spells. Let's just draw one of them. There's so many reanimation spells in Make it easy. Oh, wow. Oh, never mind, they didn't play their land. Oh, they have Legolas' quick reflexes. Oh, this is going to be a hard game to win. What the hell? Um, so this one makes gas. something fight, right? It just it shoots. shoots. Okay. Guess you probably take Wandering Emperor. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> they've they've okay. from the from where we kind of started. They've they've had some really nice draw steps. Yeah, they have they've they've drawn like one land, and every other card has been a great spell. Yeah. You went right. from you went from being I think pretty highly advantaged to now uh, you could just concede and move on to the next game. I don't know if we're quite there yet. I think <laughs> no, we of course not. Draw a reanimation spell. If you draw can... shallow, if you draw shallow grave, and you, and you can get that archon in there. Yep. Well, you have one turn because that that dungeoneer is getting in there, and the Lauren is a ring bearer too. So. Yeah, that's true. That doesn't really change too much in the sense that you're just dead if to to trap next turn anyway. But yeah, that's true. So they have Skyclave Apparition for the Regisaur. I would imagine at this point the Regisaur is the one going down, but I guess, no, they're killing the Menace creature instead. Okay. Then they have... Okay, that doesn't matter. We can't block anything. We take seven. Parallax Oof. Wave, okay. They have a nice deck. Their deck looks sick. Yeah. Also, Parallax Wave and Wandering Emperor are both very good against Reanimator. True. Yeah, do, do you think it's worth playing the second game, or should you just concede the match, you think? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyways. Think Don't worry, Paul. The, the, the real LSV is winning. He won his match already. That's great. Well, LSV's deck is awesome. The real they one. They usually are. <laughs> I guess I set you up for that one. All right. Taking eight, going to two. They can... One point short of dying to, to the quick reflexes. Does this deal extra damage too? Oh, no. I guess it doesn't give a plus one. Yeah, it's, yeah, just, yeah. it's just a really good combat. Two points short of dying to the quick reflexes. Yeah. 
<laughs> of sorts. Yeah. <laughs> All right. They're going to do the thing again? I, I, they, they really shouldn't because they don't want to give right. you more, more chances to draw stuff. All right. GG, Billy the Kitty. Let's look at our sideboard here. Virtue definitely comes in. And what are we cutting? Um, I don't like Collective Brutality that much against that kind of deck, but it's they kind of hard. They mana creatures, but they didn't have a ton. Yeah. Yeah, and like, they don't have very many spells. They have, the, I mean, obviously nabbing the fourth year Olympus was good, but like, they just don't have that many actual you like, spells. Do you like Inquisition better? Yeah, I think Inquisition's a lot better. Okay. You gotta take the Brutality out. There's also Probe, but... Yeah, maybe as a discard outlet utility. Yeah, maybe just take the probe out. That's probably fine. Because we're not worried too much about copying collective brutality can be nice too. Because again, you don't have to pay, repay the cost. So if you like Lutri, you can get like a double kicked <laughs> copied collective brutality. Drain you for four, discard two cards, kill two things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Try oh, good news. Team, Team J Bro also won the match. So look at this. Worry, we Paul. just don't have to do anything. <laughs> we just uh, just have to pick the right teammates. Can't pick teammates in this, by the way. I guess you can. There, there are two modes of the team draft, but this was random teams. Well, there's actually kind of three. There's, there's random teams. There's captains draft, and then sometimes there's people who will just like challenge other people with preset. Teams. Oh, right. There was, there was that one draft that you did recently, right? Where it was just the the old guys versus the challengers. I just not how I would frame it, but yeah, it was that's me, Eli Casis, and Luis Salvato. Those, that's some pretty old flush, guys. Flush with youth, <laughs> spring chickens, all of us. Battling against our challengers. Is there a two in front of any of your ages? <laughs> well, let's let's not. Is there a debate. three? I think there's maybe one person who's in their thirties. And let's that let's not debate what numbers the ages start with. I, I don't uh, think that's germane to how well we can draft uh, cube. No, but you were talking about you were being spring chickens and all that other stuff, though. Well, well you know, yeah. spring's pretty long sometimes. Some places the season <laughs> I lasts. Su I suppose. Quite some time. <laughs> I suppose so. Oh, I forgot about this pyrite spell bomb. Did, did he have enough? What do you think about this one? I didn't. Do you think I should? Do you think I should? I should tell you that you should take the gemstone caverns out because you're on the play or not? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Better quick. They're going to submit. <laughs> <laughs> I even told you. I was like, Luis, this gemstone caverns. I'm definitely no, put in the mountain. Put in the mountain. You, you you were already balanced in favor of black. I think you can do the mountain instead. Oh, you're 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 correct. Get the, <laughs> to get be fair, I here. just remembered when I saw it. <laughs> You're like, wait a second. Okay, here we go. Game I number two. Nick of time. Can we get the nuts? Any entomb reanimates? Just a lot of removal, but yeah, you got to keep this. Yeah. I mean, you get to go a braid or virtue into expensive taste off the dragon. Like that's a nice like casting a divination when you're casting a bunch of removal spells is pretty nice. Yeah. Just loves getting wastelanded this this channel. Yeah, was. maybe I should have played the mountain. Clearly that was a correct play. Alright. Let's virtue that thing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely virtue, because now next turn you could even cast a Oops. A braid <laughs> plus plus Def inquisition. Definitely lock the wings scorn. <laughs> Alright. Too many too many exiled cards, but So yeah, a Braid Inquisition seems awesome here. Unless they play Thalia. Yeah. I'd probably just abrade it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you can go Inquisition plus Expensive Taste next turn. Yeah. You could actually wait. You don't have to do it now because it, it can mess up their turn. Like it might be worth taking two and also seeing what they play because it's not like... He had quick reflexes. Oh, That's the like other the thing you could put into play, you could put a Lutri into your hand. Oh, and then but, copy Inquisition, maybe? Well, you'd have to do that in two turns. Or I think yeah. just abrading is probably fine. Lutri at some point will... Do you, will do you like doing the abrade first? Or waiting on the abrade? I would wait, yeah. Because okay. leaving up Legolas's quick reflexes cost them two mana. Yep. With Athalia in play. And if you like abrade it and then they drew a Mox and played a four drop, it would be pretty bad. I think you can just wait and take a hit. It's... It's not the end of the world if you don't kill this Thalia. This Thalia is not yeah, like yeah. demolishing you. Like it's going to make your life a little more annoying. It, it is annoying that it costs you an extra mana to kill it. But 
I could think of creatures they could play right now that you might rather kill anyway. Right. I think I sequenced my mana incorrectly. I should have kept the swamp in my hand so that if I miss on the dragon, I can still go yeah. swamping. Oh, position. yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, Hex Drinker. That might be something we're more interested in killing. I don't know. What do you think? Hmm. No other play. Not even pump. I, uh, Could have the reflexes. Yeah. That's what it feels do. like. Do we just kind of want to get that out of their hand? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it, it's too much mana to not cast a braid. Do you like the Hex Drinker? I would kill the Hex Drinker, I think. Right. Yeah. I mean, our spells kind are of, mostly cheap anyways, right? Yeah, so it kind of not, feels like they're going to save it here, but that, that's also fine, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, All right, well, that, yeah. that was going to get you some time. Right. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Seems like you just want to play Fable because you, you, you're you getting to the point where you're just going to discard this Inquisition. It's somehow right. never slotted in to be cast here. Yeah. It would be nice to at some point draw any sort of reanimation theme cards. A, a tutor or Entomb. Reanimation spells. I guess what you want to do is draw Archon or Atroxa and then get to immediately discard it to Fable and then draw the reanimate off that. That's the that's the all right the gem. I'm in for that. Your opponent's deck does seem quite good though. It does. Just, like just I, I don't remember boots. the last time I saw such a good green white aggro deck. Yeah, I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that. <laughs> if you don't, if any, uh, most of you won't know, but Luis and I did a team draft last night, and I was green white, and I did go zero and three. So. He is correct. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> I actually thought my deck was fine. But, Your deck right. was good, actually. I, I will admit it. So, like, yeah, like here, I'm not even sure how much I value this Inquisition. A lot of the cards they could have in hand cost four. Their right. best play, you know, they, they determined their best play was to just pump Hex Tricker and attack. So, if you want to attack with Thalia, too, just get that extra damage in. Yeah, every point counts. We're, we're Rakdos. We're going to kill it, probably. All right, well, let's just take it. And let's draw something sweet here. That's not something sweet. So what do we want to pitch? Do we need this land? No, not at all. So Watery Grave and Inquisition, you think? Yeah, I like it. I also kind of like Thalia being in play because they probably have Parallax Wave in their hand. They're, and they're kind of far away from casting it now. Yep. <laughs> okay. Nice. I mean, the way this game's going, you probably want to cast it, the, the expensive taste. You could just play the dragon, but man, if they just like, well, I don't well, know. If, it's yeah, close because if I play the expensive tastes, I do get a little bit closer to just casting the virtue. Although it's, I guess it's not that good on this board. Well, then I can I can even have something in play to trade. I can also play Reggie. That seems less good. Reggie seems like the worst of your like four options. Your options being like. Put Lutri into hand. That seems kind of bad. Cast Expensive Taste seems pretty good. Cast the dragon itself to start attacking and getting treasures, but it kind of feels like just casting Expensive Taste and seeing what's up could be pretty decent. All right. And it's any color, right? Like, I can cast it as if... No, no. You, it, you, oh. you can only cast them if you can if you can cast well, them. But you have... The Bayou all, you have, for mana creatures. Well, you also have ton, tons of green because they're Yavamaya. And then you have right. treasures for white cards. Plus, you might hit a, like a planes and a white card or something. Okay. All right. Expensive taste it is. What do we have? We hit a Gaius Cradle and a Boromir. <laughs> I mean, you can play the Cradle because it's a freebie with Yavimaya in play. That's fair. I'm glad they didn't draw a Cradle. Cradle would look would be really good for them right now. <laughs> and I guess we just pass. Yeah. All right. Not ideal. Point, that was a really Boromir. bad fable. That was a really bad fable. Well, it cleared a bunch of lands off the top of your deck. Yep, it definitely did that. But we're just so far away from actually reanimating something big, which is kind of the, the problem. Yeah, that Thalia might be hurting them more than it's hurting us. Yeah, it, it really did disrupt your plays on turns like two through four. But like yeah. at this point, it's not doing too much. And I think uh, I don't like that they drew the mocks. I guess it's better than them drawing a land. Next turn, we this, can go... We're going to have three creatures in play if we play this dragon. Yeah, yeah so. you can go like dragon into Regisaur or something. Yeah. Ooh, okay. 
Fable down, probably. Yeah, they're probably going to attack you for five and then kill the Fable. Yep. It would be really nice to just draw Archon, honestly. You could actually cast a Troxa, too. Like, you'd have to cash in a treasure for it, but... Right. Yeah, you yeah. don't really need to do that right now. Oh, jeez. That was terrible. Uh, yeah, that's unfortunate, because I think you <laughs> would probably have attacked here. But... Yeah. Well, what you could do here is go, like... I can go Dragon Regisaur. Yeah. I think so. I think that's good. And keep the weight on the on the brutality here. Yeah. So dragon. Reggie. And then this cradle is actually going to work overtime because next turn you can go like Lutri in hand, brutality, copy Lutri if you really wanted to. <laughs> That's expensive, yeah. but you can Do we have the mana for that? Three, mm -hmm. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, okay. I mean, you'd have to draw a land or attack with the dragon to get a treasure or attack with the goblin to get a treasure. Right. What you really don't want to see is Parallax Wave, but Collective Brutality couldn't stop that anyway. Yeah. They can... And Tick this not killing up. Thalia is not that bad either. Yeah. They could also just tap out to Hex Drinker to, Hex Drinker to Max. No, this feels like a Parallax Wave, Luis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you just lose to that. <laughs> okay. There's just not much you can do about that. Yeah. All right. They, well. they had to draw two lands in a row, and, you know, is what it is. I mean, you can draw for your turn if you draw something good. Oh, they can save it too, but I guess it's still You can't okay. even bitter triumph the hex drinker. Oh, you're right. It's pro instance. I can't Now your cradle mana's all gone too. Man, Parallax Wave, heck of a card. Yeah. You're, uh, you're, you're just dead. I mean you can put Lutri in a hand and then do nothing with it. You can I guess you can like brutality kill Thalia gain two life or try to, but then the hex drinker just gets pumped up, especially if Thalia gets uh, parallax waved in response. All right. Well, let's try. You you probably want to tap her cradle for mana. Oh, you can still tap it when it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. It's cast minus two minus two drain. I mean, they could just choose to let it die if they want to keep my creatures exiled for longer. True. And I guess yeah. he, this does buy you an additional turn because you do gain two life no matter what. All right. And then you just put Lutri into hand. Yeah, I mean, we're still... The problem is you don't have a big creature in your graveyard, so all your animates are still dead draws. <laughs> yeah. Do we have a way to filter through a bunch of stuff? I don't know. Okay, well... That's it. All right, they had a really nice green-white deck. Yeah, so, Parallax yeah. Wave is a card you're going to have a hard time beating, and you just do really badly with reanimates. At no point did you reanimate a single card. Yeah. And your deck has like five reanimates. And we do. Five we have card outlets. We, this, is, <laughs> this, this is even more redundant than the last uh, reanimated yeah, deck that yeah. we drafted. This is a really good reanimator deck. You played a bad matchup, Andrew, badly. And yeah, that, that is it, how it, it is. It is. It is what it is. All right, round two, playing against Jesse. We would love to play first. Let's put Lutri in. Okay. Exile. And now we have all the tools, but we're missing the land. So we got a mulligan this, sadly. Oh, man. One of these days. Um, Hold on, hold on. Let's, let's whoa, look. Whoa, whoa. Oh, Vamp for a land? I would, I would just keep this hand. If you draw, a, you're on the draw, right? Oh, you're on the play? I'm on the play. The problem is if... I really want to vamp for Entomb. But... You're really far away from doing that. So if you keep and you go... I have to vamp land. for Mountain if I keep this. And the question is, is this a decent hand with Blood Tithe Harvester, yeah. Bitter Triumph? Well, what's Jesse playing? Hold on. You got you to gotta, you gotta do that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, looks like she's on Teamer, Sneak, Uro, Seed Shark, Pest Infestation, Third Path Iconoclast, Mana Lake. So Teamer value, basically. 
Team I think Bounty? I would keep this. I think I would just keep this and vamp for mountain or Badlands. I guess we have Badlands. I think you have Badlands and Blood Crypt, right? Or do you I have think Black we Cliff have, Cliffs? We have we have Blood Crypt. We can get oh, Black we Cl- can get Cliffs. Yeah, we can get Black Cliff Cliffs. Okay. Like if you draw any creature, big creature, then you get to reanimate and Blood Tides can help find you to another land. Maybe I imagine we just main phase this so we don't get this spell pierced. Yeah, you're probably right. But I guess it would be funny if she had Thought Scour. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, where is it? Here it is. It'd be so funny if she went Thought Scour you and it milled Black Cleave Cliffs Archon and then you just drew a land. <laughs> <laughs> that would be unreal. <laughs> yeah, because like you get to Blood Tithe and if you draw a land now, you have a Fable and this is just like an amazing start. And even if you don't, you have like the Cast Bitter sack. Triumph or Sack the Blood and then Cast Curtains or something like that. Like you, okay. you've got... With Exhum in hand, you kind of want to wait on killing one of her creatures until you Exhum, but obviously that might not be the case. You can also at some point discard Exhum if you're yeah. not finding anything for it. You got to catch you a Trium to go get? Let's just find a land here. Xander's Lounge. Okay. I got a good mana. Third Path Iconoclast. That one probably needs to die. Yeah, I would imagine so. Um, yeah. Yeah, we just use the harvester here. I think so. And then I think I want to dig for a land here, right? Yeah, you definitely have to. Pitch Reggie? Yeah, I guess so. It feels like it's going to be a while before. Or Exhum. We can you could pitch Exhum. Okay. You don't, you don't really want to Exhum back Harvester and, or Blood Tithe and, or sorry, uh, third path and you're like pretty far away from from doing any sort of reanimate stuff so by the time you find a big creature and then you discard it maybe you'll find one of your other animate spells okay i'm in Ooh, sea chrome coast all five that's, colors it's a white card as well all right probably need to kill that too <laughs> Ooh. i would just drop fable just drop fable okay yeah like, you got to get something going here. You you also even just do Shieldred, so, like, having that as a thing to cast is pretty nice against a teamer deck. And then maybe you can maneuver this to a turn where you cast Bitter Triumph and Registrar or something in the same turn. All right, that's a Pest Infestation. Yeah, not ideal. Okay. Uh, would you attack and play Shieldred or just now go for... Killing the tracker. You could attack and use both your removal spells if you wanted. Oh, I see like, what you're saying. Like, like kill the tracker before blocks, or just let 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 her if she wants to block the tracker. That's fine. Oh, sure, sure, sure. But probably she double blocks with pests, and then it's kind of up to you if you want to use both your removal spells. I think I probably would. Okay. I mean, she's down three cards. Yeah. And then we just go ahead and fire off a braid on like one of the pests or whatever. And then we'll just kill the tracker now. Yeah, I think so. Because like this lets you use your goblin token, lets you use your mana a little more efficiently, efficiently, and then it still sets up Shieldred into Regisaur as your big threats. You also have a Concealing Curtains at some point you could flip. Yep. Sneak attack. Uh-huh. Guess we're guess we're curtaining now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, would, I would have a hard time not doing that against a sneak in play. Yeah. All right, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> huh. I mean, you could just let these live, probably. Yeah. Are we even that concerned about any of these? No. I mean, oh, well, well, deck does draw a bunch of extra cards. Yeah, but at a pretty big cost. Right. Because, like, if you take DAC, you're it's like you're getting half the DAC for free at zero mana. And you mm-hmm. get to attack and kill DAC if she plays DAC in some of the cases. Though I guess she gets to sneak in a Golos afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you take DAC. That's probably fine. Or you take Golos. Oh, take Golos just so that 
just so she doesn't have something to block with. Yeah, though obviously the DAC into into stuff is scary. Maybe you just take the DAC. That's probably better. All right. And you, if you can get, if you can dodge for like one turn and get a shield ridden to play, like you might be able to to pressure Jesse on life totals. Obviously the mana leak is going to make that awkward, but yeah. you know you can just take mana leak, or you can just play around mana leak if you if if you if she just leaves mana up for it. Yeah, I mean that's like I guess that's also one consideration to letting her keep the deck. Because then she'll play it and not have leak up for the next turn. But you can also play Registrar through leak. Or if you draw a land, you can actually can play, play Shieldred through leak. Yeah. Could play both um, if, if she doesn't keep up leak. Yeah. yeah. Or if she does, you can cast Shieldred. She doesn't mana leak it because you have two treasures and a land on tap. And then you put Lutri in hand. Well, she's tanking, which I like. <laughs> okay. There's Mari Command. So looking for looking for cards. Killing the Goblin and, and looting. And needing... Looking for probably some kind of Eldrazi or something big here. Yeah, Itali. I didn't really look to see what was what was the the sneak targets of choice. What did they pitch? Okay, so Mana Leak gone. Uh, cross fingers. No. Golos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Paul. I'm really glad I could come and help you draft today. I, I think oh, that thank is. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you so much. This is the exactly the coaching I need. Woo! We are getting smacked. Uh, All right, yeah, I'm just yeah. scooping this one. Let's uh, yeah. let's go to the next one before they attack for lethal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All mm. right. Um, do we have enough blue for this card? No, oh, I don't think the so. Play, I so would take the play. gemstone <laughs> for mountain. Yeah. No, I think your deck is about as well set up as you would want. You could put in Kozilek over one of the removal spells if you wanted. I don't know that I would even do that, but you could. Well, so she had a Tireless Tracker. It's yeah. like a cheap thing we wanted to kill. Maybe Fatal Push isn't so good. But it kills Tireless Tracker or Third Path Iconoclast. Does this one? Well, we don't have fetches. You're not revolting all that easy. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, maybe you take out Fatal Push because... I think just trying to have a like if if she plays a sneak, having a Kozilek to attack could be a way to like kind of fight against that. All right, <laughs> let's try. We have been getting destroyed. We uh, you you. <laughs> you are part of this. See, you're right above me. You are right <laughs> above me. Look, when we win, I, I suppose we can share in the share in the glory. But, but when we lose, it's it's pilot error. Well, that seems kind of unfair. You said, you said that, not me. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I just kind of felt that implication. What about Deadly Dispute? Oh, too late. I would not play Deadly Dispute. Okay. I would I would have a hand that puts a creature from your graveyard into play, though. You haven't tried that strategy yet. Yeah. I'm, I'm working on it, Luis. <laughs> I mean, it's close. I, I would keep, because if you draw a discard spell or a reanimate spell... Then, then you you get right, to do it. So if you draw a reanimate spell, you can you can vamp for entomb and get archon into play. And if you draw a discard outlet, you can just vamp for reanimation spell and, and discard a trox and put her into play. So this has outs, and you get to even draw a card of the probe right away. All right, let's do this. We're gonna probe. We're gonna find all the goodies. Will one card get it done? What what are we yeah. what are we missing here? Like entomb. Yeah, yeah. Because then you go. Well, you don't get to turn two. But we don't have the you, we don't have the reanimate. Yeah, but if you draw in tomb, you can set it up. If you draw like scrapwork hound or something, scrapwork mutt, you can go turn one vamp, get a get an animate. Turn two mutt. What about if you draw all lands? And she's got a reanimate. <laughs> well, is that a one lander? <laughs> on the draw. Well, wow. A one lander on the draw with a tap land. That's well. There's funny. a. One of these? What does this do? Yeah, but that's pretty slow, especially with the tap land. Yeah. This, this could work out really bad. She kept this on seven, huh? All right. I guess that's uh, <laughs> something you can do. That is the thing you can do. Is there just something great I can vamp for immediately? I don't. I mean, Fable of the Mirror Breaker is the best card, but... I would wait I a turn for that, right? If that's yeah, what I, I wanted so. to do. Yeah, I think you just wait and see what you draw off vamp. Or off your draw step. Probably just a land. In Tomb? <laughs> Oh, okay. So now, now what you can do is you can just play around and pass, but like you can, 
you can vamp for a reanimate spell because you know you're going to play Fable, though. If, if she's drawn a land and leaves up Mana Leak, that's a little annoying. But Yeah. But if she leaves up Mana Leak, then it's also like you just don't have to cast spells into it. Obviously, she drew a land right away. <laughs> I bet she's going to probably want to just run something out here. You got to play that Iconoclast, I think. Or, oh, oh my talisman. gosh. Okay. Into Research Desk. Wow. That's nice. That right. Wait, I think not playing the I, research desk. I think it's desk? worth fam. Why is she not playing the research desk? Wow, that's weird. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Oh, to to save it for iconoclast, you could just vamp for your animate okay. now, because you know you're gonna get the resolve of fable here. Is it exhum, or would you just get life death? I think exhum is probably fine. And then we just play a fable here, and, we're and it good. looks like you vamped for the fable. Yep. Like that's what I would assume if I were her. <laughs> yep. And then next turn, and at this got... point, she ha she can't just pass and just leave up mana leak, right? It's just no, no. This no fable way. is gonna run away with it. So I think she's probably gonna do something like third path desk. I sort of got if, if she pest infestations the fable. <laughs> <laughs> oh my they, gosh! <laughs> then you, then you don't have a discard outlet. And that's the one the unknown card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said I would be tilted. <laughs> uh, you know what we do then, Luis? We cast a dragon and we hard cast a Traxa next turn. Yep. That's we what go. we do. Wait, wait for it. Okay, okay. Dude, All right. Land, finally. We did it. We did it. Oh, finally. We got to do the lands. thing. You got to reanimate a creature, Paul. How does it feel? <laughs> Our reanimator deck, game three. Let's pitch these two, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're definitely going to hit a land off a of Trox, so. or your draw step, too. Should I, oh, I, wait. Yeah, no, Does you should exhume first. No, no, she can have. She could technically have it, but you, you got to exhume first because. You want to collect a brutality killing the third path, and you can't do that before exhuming. Oh, I, I was just wondering if I just don't care about this card and thinking um, I want to brutality a potential force of negation slash force of will and then well, make sure. J-Bro has the force of negation. Okay. All right. We haven't seen force of will. Okay. Yeah, I, I, looked, at all the, I looked at all the replays. We haven't seen force of will. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's just get... Future sorcery land artifact instant. Nice. Artifact, sorcery, instant, and then harvester, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine so. All right. There we go. There we and go. And now you can like do some things. Well said. Okay. Okay. Oof. We Oof. got a game. Look at that. We got a game. Reanimate. We got to be really careful about that one. Got to be really careful about reanimate. We cannot just toss things into our graveyard willy nilly. Oh, Dan Gemstone took, Caverns. Took, Dan took the animate dead, by the way. <laughs> Okay. And then Jesse has the reanimate. So now you know where both those go. <laughs> so that probably was. I assume Jabro was passing to Jesse because that would make Jabro sense. Jabro just, just, just bust a blank on it because there's no card in his deck that's better than reanimate. <laughs> <laughs> Other I mean, than not, Time Walk. Besides, yes, yeah, but yeah. we know that wasn't in the pack. I'm saying there's no right. card from that pack that was better than reanimate. Yeah. All right. Game three. All right, let's see, let's, see, let's see if you've got what it takes. This deck can turn to an Archon or an Atroxa. It can. I mean, it's not going to, but it could. Entomb. Entomb, Exhum. All right, another fair hand that we have to keep. Yeah, you've just done such a bad job of having, <laughs> like, reanimate plus thing to reanimate in your, in your hand. You just haven't yet to do that. I guess our deck doesn't have a lot of those creatures, right? We only have the two creatures. Yeah, but you have Vamp and Entomb. Yeah. No, just draw a land. Well, Inquisition at least will give you a decent way to see how this game is shaping up. 
So Oh, so good. You can take Tracker. She's going to play Outland Liberator, and then you can kill the Liberator and the command. The- <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. This actually looks like a red-black mid-range game where obviously she's got a lot of draws, and you, you're going to have some draws. But the fact that you have Decadent Dragon as like a three-for-one, Lutria as like a as like a two-for-zero maybe if you can copy something. Like, right. I feel like you could actually uh, – you could, could actually also get play going pretty nicely. Yeah, but you're, she's going to play the Outland Liberator. It's like pretty hard to to pass up just getting a creature into play, especially a werewolf that if you don't have a play can flip. Yeah, no, great point. This is yeah, really fantastic. Shh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You need to stop drawing lands, though. Oh, nice. That's okay. a good one. What do we pitch here? Just land, I would imagine. Yeah, just which land? All right. Uh, target opponent. I don't know, land. <laughs> Probably mountain, because Watery Grave could also help by casting dragon spells, because remember, you have to actually like pay the, the real costs for them. Yep. Mishra's... Mishra's research desk. All right. I mean, that's a kind of slow two-for-one, so it takes a lot of mana and could even miss sometimes, though that's not going to miss very often. Okay, didn't draw me in a leak. All right. Would you uh, expense? Oh, maybe we just play that. No, I think you just, just expensive taste. Expensive taste. Okay. Yeah, if water groove sounds pretty good, you should probably just do it now. Yeah. She's got mana leak in her deck. I don't know. Well, what if you hit a mox? <laughs> the old beginning combat expensive taste. Don't hit green cards, I guess. Where, where are the... Oh. We hit... Ooh, oh, Knight's Whisper and a land? So now right. you can go Dragon into like getting Lutri and then Lutri the Knight's Whisper at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not necessary to do all that. Yeah. Okay, cracking the research desk. Is this until exiling. the end of your next turn? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Dak. Playing a Dak Faden. Well, yeah. you have a way to kill that. We do have the Triumph for that. Would you use the triumph right away? I mean, I can go harvester, harvester. Yeah, probably triumph. harvester yeah. triumph sounds like a pretty good plan. You you really don't want her just ca- using Dak a bunch, like yeah, and finding stuff because like you have so much good long game now that yeah. like preventing yourself from dying to a sneak attack or having just having her get stuff into play sounds pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Those are in the graveyard. Okay, multiple talisman in the deck. One card left. And let's go ahead and play the island here. Is there a reason to... Yeah, no. it seems fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Island, it's bitter triumph. Or should I try to bait the mana leak? Yeah, I would blood tithe first. Yeah. And then should I upkeep this? I guess it, so. It leaves it more open to like other big counter spells. Yeah, but I don't think there's that many of those. Yeah. We've seen the mana leak. And I'm just going to pay the life here, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Okay. I mean, we've done some good, great grinding here. Inquisition a card, Brutality two cards, Bitter Triumph a card. Oh, Tinker? <laughs> oh, what? No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the Bulls is Citadel? Oh, Golos! Oh my what God! Happened? What happened? <laughs> did the gristle brand? Okay. Okay, we need a way to kill the gristle brand. Oh, holy you just, cow! You just used the bitter triumph and then reanimated an outland liberator. Sure. Oh my gosh! I mean, you don't really burn, huh? We we use the bitter triumph. Oh my gosh! Okay, so I guess we. We Knight's Whisper yeah, to try to find a way to kill this. I don't even there know what you three, can find. Oh, yeah, we can't. We, we don't have a <laughs> Chain Lightning or anything. Oh, no, they can kill us when oh, no, we're 15. Okay, well, so we'll Knight's Whisper first. Yeah, yeah, you can Knight's Whisper yeah, before oh for sure. Oh, my gosh. Do we have any way to kill this? Does that change the equation in any way? No, they killed our, they killed our, our thing. Oh, we can... No, no. I was like, can we can we Lutri Vamp Tutor? Does that do anything? 
Oh god, we are getting smashed. Okay. Yeah, this was looking good until Tinker Citadel came to play. <laughs> I, I guess you put Lutri into hand and pass. Is there anything you can vamp for like, on next your next upkeep? I don't know. I mean, we should probably cast it, right? It's it's. The... Oh yeah. I mean, I think you're probably just dead this turn anyway. Yeah. Holy cow! What a citadel. <laughs> Gristle brand plus citadel is is a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. That's that's in just a hard cast FDK. Yeah. I mean, is there a way for me to be able to dash this Kozilek in somehow? But they can even block with the FTK. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, I mean, we'll we'll cast Vamp and we'll we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's the best you can do. That 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 that's, that's all. I got. Is there anything you could, like Lutri? If you had time lock, you Lutri time lock. That would be awesome. Can we exhume anything? No. Shieldred does not quite do it anymore. <laughs> Shieldred would have been great before. Yeah, I think we're dead. Uh, you could you could get Scrapwork Mutt and discard Kozlek to Scrapwork Mutt and hope to draw Shallow Grave off that, but that doesn't even win, unfortunately. <laughs> it would be a cool play, though. All right, let's go for the cool play. <laughs> One time. Come on. Let's just at least do the cool thing. Nope. All right. GG. All right. Well, uh, the good news is J Bros 2 0 and Salvados 2 0, I think. But. Uh, <laughs> wow. This is, Actually, this is not going well. You guys, well, you guys are up 4 3 right now. All right, folks. Luis had to step out for this. He could not stand to take responsibility for losing three matches in a row. So it's going to be only on me. And just on me. So we'll see if we can turn this out. Maybe he was just bad luck, right? Maybe he was just bad luck. So we'll keep this. We haven't drawn our Mox Ruby yet, by the way. I would really love to do that, especially on this following turn. That would be nice. We have Inquisition of Kozilek turn one into... We have the Shallow Grave, and hopefully the Fable can find us something to Shallow Grave in. Now, Timrod's playing a pretty sweet Teamer strategy. And he does have Spell Pierce and Counter Spell, so we do have to be mindful of those. Let's get the Kavu. And that is his hand. His hand is a little bit slow, but he does have Minsk and Boo, which is just an incredible magic card. The best Planeswalker in Vintage Cube. Try him down. And can we find... <sighs> Needed the Mox there. Needed the Mox there. Okay. Triome down, maybe Steam Vents here or Flooded Trend for another Triome. Oh, you have a play. Oh, it is just another Triome. Don't want to get stifled, I guess, potentially. Fatal Push. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and play Fable. And let's hope to draw something that we can Shallow Grave in here. I wonder if we're supposed to just play the Kozilek. Just feels like we're often missing too much. <gasps> we drew it. We drew it. Okay. <laughs> and he doesn't have counterspell mana up. All right. So let's card. Let's discard uh, Atraxa and Swamp. Let's play Swamp. Let's play. Shallow Grave. This is going to get us a lot of action. All right, so let's figure out our situation here. Lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. So Entomb Exhum seems pretty good here, right? Because that allows us to go get that allows us to go get Archon. So let's get Entomb Exhum, and for creature we can go with either the Carnosaur or the Shieldred. And then for land we'll get we'll get Bayou. And then for creature we'll get let's get Shieldred. We can attack. And they get to play a Minsk and Boo next turn. Alright. 
So that's nine damage. And then I suppose we can just wait. If they just go Minsk and Boo, we just entomb the Archon, exhume the Archon, and we should be good. Forest, I mean, look, the only play here is Minsk and Boo here, right? So, yep. And we'll just take the four damage here. We can Fatal Push, but we don't need to because the Archon makes them sacrifice. And we're at 27 life here, so. So let's go ahead and Entomb. Oh, Creature or Planeswalker, okay. Interesting. That was good. Now, how big is this Kavu? Red, green, white, black, blue. It's a 5-5? Five, five? Okay. So now we can go ahead and cast... Exhum. Okay. They can sack the boo, I guess. Okay, that's that's totally fine. They'll discard a card. Does this go anywhere? Okay. All right, I just don't want to mess this up. <laughs> I can play a Shieldred here. I can also, I can Fatal Push and play Shieldred. Actually, I can also kill Minsk and Boo. Why don't I do that? So I can Fatal Push the Boo. I can Fatal Push the Boo, attack Minsk and Boo, and then Carnosaur the Minskin Boo. Yeah, why don't I do that? So let's go ahead and fatal push. And pass. All right. <laughs> Who needs Luis? Who needs Luis? I just need to draw better than my opponents every time. That's all I need to do. But he does have a nice kind of a teamer stompy, stompy deck going there. I think Virtue of Persistence is going to be good as another good removal spell. Probably don't need the Pyrite spell bomb. Rotting Registrar is also just a large creature. I think this is another... Well, so they do have counter... He does have counter spell. So Gitaxian Probe could still be good. Hmm... Let's see, I like Fatal Push, I like the Curtains, I like the Entomb, I like Inquisition. I mean, we have other ways to look at the hand. Let's just cut the probe again. We have Collective Brutality, Concealing Curtains, and Inquisition, so. All right, another awesome hand. Come on. Mox Ruby. It starts with Mox Ruby and Fable the Mirror Breaker, probably. Oh, guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to board out the Gemstone Cavern. Wait, no, I'm on the draw. I'm on the draw. I'm not used to winning games. <laughs> Gemstone Cavern? Oh, there's a Mox. There is a Mox. Okay. That allows us to play things early. We, are, we will keep. I mean, this doesn't have any of the, the ways to actually reanimate. But we do have a turn where... Tur wow, English. Turn one, Scrapwork Mutt, potentially. Although, I don't even know what I want to pitch. Okay, well, that makes things a little bit easier. Hmm. I kind of just want to lead with Inquisition. See what he's working with. We can also put Lutri into our hand next turn. I don't really like the idea of running out the Register this early. If he has a Spell Pierce, he has a Spell Pierce. Okay, so... Ooh, Aragorn and Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Fantastic, fantastic creatures. Um, this one has three toughness. This one will have... This one will be a 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Sure. That's some fat two-mana creatures. 
So next turn we can Fatal Push the Neshoba Brawler. We can also just put Lutri into our hand. No reason to expose the Mox Ruby to some Disenchant effect here. So there's a Forest, and then there's the Brawler. Okay. These initiative cards might be kind of problematic, but we do have the Rotting Registrar to get in. All right. Um, let's see. This Brutality doesn't actually seem very good. Yeah, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go with. Um, I'm just. I'm just killing this now. And I think I'm just gonna play the Mutt. And this card. Actually, I don't need this mountain. Okay. Our curve kind of stops at three anyways. So I think copying this might be good. Okay, so they have Copter. Okay, Watery Grave. Okay. We can play Regisaur. We need a reanimation effect now. Because we can already entomb the big creature. We can't block the Copter. So let's go ahead and attack. They're going to play caves or what have you. All right, so we need to put Lutri into our hand. This hand, I mean, I think it's just going to be Archon. Oh, they didn't draw land. Wow. I didn't even consider that part. <laughs> okay. Let's just go ahead and put Archon into our yard. That's a Vampiric Tutor. Okay. Are we going to do it here, folks? All right, we're just passing here. Do I want a double Vampiric? Doesn't seem bad. I mean, if he draws a blue source, he's just going to play a creature anyways. Right? He's just going to play Aragorn. So I don't think I'm too worried about counter magic here. Magda, oh, that's really good. But we do have the Brutality to try to get the counter spell out of his hand. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I don't think I need to double tutor. Persist? Is it persist? I think that's the best one. There's also Shallow Grave. I don't like Exhum. Oh, there's also Life Death. What, pers I think Persist is probably the best. Yeah, let's go Persist. All right. So now, why don't we? Brutality. And I don't... I mean, I, I guess we just do this, right? What do we discard, though? I guess it's the Regisaur. This just makes us fight around counter magic. I mean, if he does Spell Pierce, we just let the Spell Pierce resolve. And then just try to win off the Archon. Which I think should be good enough. I feel like it's not gonna, they're not going to have too many ways to kill this Archon. Is this a remand? Arcane Denial. Okay. Well, I'm glad we went with the Collective Brutality. All right. Crew happens. Perhaps we shouldn't have discarded Reggie. We'll see. But let's go ahead and target our Archon. They can't daze me. They have to discard a card. Sack a creature. Play land. All right. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have played a land. I don't know. Oh, I draw two cards here. Yes. Yes, I would like to draw two cards. Okay. All right. So now we have Lutri. We have four card types in the graveyard with Unholy Heat. Uh, yeah, I suppose we'll take this. Okay, yeah, this is going to be great. <laughs> Glad we kept the Lutri. Oh, I guess we would have killed the creature anyways. But yeah, I think they're just dead here. Okay, Island, Ponder. Okay, yeah, this, this has got to be it, right? Lutri, copy Unholy Heat, kill Magda and Caves, attack. And we're good. Honestly, maybe we don't even need to... We don't even... Do we need to... No, we don't need to Lutri... The Unholy Heat. We just kill caves. And that's it. <laughs> yes! Alright! 
All right, we did an O3. We did an O3. And it's just such justice that we got this when Luis was not here. He needed to go uh, away for some work stuff. But uh, hey, look, at least we didn't get the O3. All right, let's take a look at this deck. Just another quick review, taking a look at what this deck was capable of. We had kind of a nice Rakdos, almost a fair strategy, right? We had a good amount of removal. We had hand disruption. And then we had the, we had the Atraxa and Archon. And I guess in a pinch, Trumpeting Carnosaur as three cards to discard. And then we had Exhume and Persist as ways to get these creatures back. Of course, Persist doesn't work on Atraxa, but you want Archon most of the time anyways. And then we had the Shallow Grave with Vampiric Tutor. So this was kind of our... Oh, sorry. Also life and death. So we had four reanimation spells, three creatures, and we just couldn't find that combination often enough. But I felt like this was this is enough to try to find what you need, along with cards like Fable the Mirror Breaker, Blood Tithe Harvester, and to some extent, Scrapwork Mud to help find what you need. Oh, also in Tomb. Yeah, I mean, this deck felt really good to us, to me. We have six cards that's some combination of finding creatures to put into the yard and reanimating them. We just weren't able to implement that plan all that often, right? Every time our opening hand was just some lands with a removal spell and an Inquisition, and then in those instances, I just couldn't I just didn't have the time to kind of piece together my combo. But we were able to do it in that last match for the 1-2. Hopefully, this means that our team can draw. I think that's kind of where we're at right now. But hopefully, we get there. Hopefully, we get there. Once again, I want to thank Luis for joining in and helping draft this deck. Reanimator back-to-back. -back. Hopefully, we can get a 3-0 next week. But until then, uh, thank you for watching this video. Really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. I'll catch you next time.